Last year, I bought a new 3D printer with the sole aim of I want a Warlord Titan. Now, I don't just want any Warlord Titan. The Titan that I want, Games Workshop, doesn't even make even if I could afford a real one. I want to make a Chaos Warlord Titan. Welcome to Die Dice Tabletop. My name is Chris and we are not going to delay. We're getting straight into building the Wardle Titan today. So the things that we've got, files to start off with, absolute must, rotary tool and assorted bits, microfiber cloth for cleaning up any little dusties that get everywhere, that's going to be useful. Scalpel, of course, a good pair of snips. As well as that, we've got two different types of sandpaper here, a 240 and a 400 grit. This will just help us remove different amounts of plastic as we go along. Starting off then with the base of the foot, as you can see the print didn't come out too successfully on the bottom but this doesn't matter, it's going to be facing down, um, we're not going to see it by the time it's all built. We've got four toes for each foot and as you can see the toes don't fit properly into the sockets. So what we're going to need to do is go around and make sure that every single toe is able to fit into every single socket. This is so I don't have to remember which ones go where. We're going to be removing the plastic off the side. And to start off with, I made the mistake of thinking that I'd be able to do it with sandpaper. And as you're going to find out, that was a very big mistake. This would have taken me a, <laughs> a sincerely long amount of time. So afterwards I moved on to using the Dremel. That turned out to just be the best option and absolutely burn through plastic. Um, and as you'll find out later on, that is going to be a godsend tool for me throughout this. Here we are at the point of me doing this, that I realised my foolish mistake, uh, and you'll see just how much of a difference this made going through it. Finally, just finishing off with the sandpaper just to get that nice little snug fit, making sure that it fits into each one, and it does. A serious note when you are working with resin and plastics, make sure you've got a mask on. I got a mask and a fan on. You don't want this in your lungs. Right, with the toes complete, it's now on to the thighs. These have mainly got marks where supports have not broken off properly, um, so we're going to need to come in, remove those, as well as that we need to make sure that it also fits onto the sort of knee joint there. As you can see, some of the damage from removing the supports. So the first step, get all this cleared up, really simple, just sand down the surfaces of the knee joints. This just makes sure then that it fits snug into the bottom of the thigh receiver. And that fits in there nice. It only really needs to be snug in one way because it's going to be fixed in one position. I don't need this moving. So now with one side done, it's on to the other. Not quite right. And after a nice little bit of love, it fits in. Brilliant. With that now done, we can move on to the shins. There have been some supports that have got stuck to the model during printing, so we need to get those done. But to see where I need to be removing those, we can come on and put the armor panels on. And this is the first time that I'm starting to see it sort of come together with the Chaos armor panels, and it looks amazing. I cannot wait to get a full Chaos Wardle Titan built up and serving Grandfather Nurgle. To do this, we're heading back to the rotary tool, swapping out the sandpaper bit for a more smaller, I think it's a carbon diamond tippy bit thing. We're just going to really gently take this to the surface of all the little support marks where they're raised up and just to try and bring it flush. Any part where it's been pitted, we don't want to go and make that any worse. So we're only looking just to really remove it and make it all flush with the surface. And 
and that's already looking much better. You can see the sort of pitting there, that doesn't matter. Once the model's painted, you'll hardly see it, especially with the armor panels wrapped around it too. So there's a couple of little lines as well, sort of in between where the armor panels mount and where the ankle sort of foot piston joint mounts, that's that corrugated rail in the middle that you can see. It was these areas that the supports fitted onto with the orientation of how I set the print up. So these are the ones that have got the most affected areas to them. But they didn't take too long just to go around. I think in total it took me about 10, 15 minutes just to clean them all up. Uh, and that's probably being a bit more perfectionist than I needed to be in the end. Okay, shins complete is now back to the thighs. These are in a much better state, uh, but as you can still see, there's still a little bit of uh, damage there that needs to be rectified. So the first thing I did was make a big mistake on this bit here. I picked up my snips thinking I'd be able to take it off and bang, out comes a chunk of plastic. <laughs> so don't be like me and do not take snips to cured resin. So the rotary tool here was my friend again, making light work of any raised areas of plastic that need to be smoothed down, just coming back in with the sandpaper as well to make it all nice and flush wherever needed. After a quick clean with the airbrush to get all the dust out, you can see that's looking much better than when we started. Next was the satisfying task of getting these little supports out. While the craft knife didn't work at first, moving over to a nail file, they just popped straight out, and this was great. I was finding for these lighter lines that the rotary tool bit I had was too aggressive, so it has this little polishing bit on it. Um, and using that, it was able to just take the burr straight down and make it flush with the plastic. It was brilliant. Moving on to the second find now, and this one's in a much better state than the other ones. We start with a satisfying job of popping all of these out making sure to break them cleanly at both sides. Uh, with that done, all it is is just a couple of support marks uh, that are really easily taking up the craft knife and another rotary bit attachment. And that's the other thigh done, both complete. Moving up the model now, it is onto the hip and waist, and you might already be able to see a big problem. This did not print flat. It's not a massive issue, something that I'm not too concerned about at the moment. I'm going to be making a hole in the top here for the electronics to go through, so I need this bit to be as strong as possible for now. We are going to probably bring it down a little bit later on the best that we can, but it's just not worth looking at. It's also going to be hidden by the torso as well, so I'm going to leave it. It's not, as I say, a big concern of mine. The rest of the print has turned out fine, so let's just get on with cleaning it. We can come back to this if we need to. That was nice and quick. The next thing that we need to do is get these hip joints to fit nice within their sockets there. It's not gonna make sense to try and take any plastic away from there, so instead we're gonna take it off the hip joint itself. So the first thing we need to do is get these cleaned up. They don't thankfully have much that needs to be done, just a couple of pop supports out. Uh, as you see, this is not going in at all. So I rolled up the sandpaper to make it nice and easy to go around the cylinder of the hip joint, gave it a good few twists and kept going until it fitted in. Now that looks and is fitting snug. I did the same to the other one and like the toes, made sure that they fit in each side so it didn't matter which way around it was when it came to building it. We're moving on fast now and we're on to the torso. This is gonna take a lot of prep work. As you can see with the base here, I had to print this in two parts. Any part that you see that's got holes in it is because I printed these hollow it so the resin can drain out. Now, like the other flat parts is that sometimes the flat surface doesn't print entirely properly, this is probably just user error on my behalf. So what we need to do is make sure that all these parts fit into their respective little receivers. When you're printing at 100%, these tolerances, it's just not going to fit. And if you resize the parts within your slicer to fit, then nothing's going to go together properly. So it's always better just to print at 100%, do this prep work afterwards. If you see Squidmar and Midwinter Mini's video on a real Warlord Titan, you know, Forge or Kits themselves, they've got a lot of work that needs to be done in order to put the model together. So when you're printing, it's also to be expected. To be fair, I think that this requires maybe a little bit less prep work than what I've seen um, from those guys' videos. Uh, but still, it's it's quite a lot that has to go into it to start off with. And as you might have guessed here, I put these drainage holes on the wrong side, so we're gonna have to hide those when we end up building it. Starting at the bottom then, we're going to need to get these two sides flush and meeting up neatly. Despite how they might look, they're not too bad. Um, a Dremel tool is going to be a bit too aggressive and take too long, I think, to come at this. So instead, we're just going to use a bit of sandpaper. That didn't take too long to do, and now they meet nicely. 
Next, we now need to get the sides of the torso to fit into the receivers on the base. Now, this is a little bit difficult because obviously the base is in two parts as well as we need to get this bit to fit in as well. First step is going to be flattening down this badly printed edge. Next, we're going to start to remove some material around where the torso side fits into the receiver in the base. Started off just using some sandpaper to start off with because obviously we don't want to go too fast, too quick, and it's once you've removed the plastic, you can't get it back. So it's always better just to go slow, have a tight fit, as opposed to take away too much plastic, and then you're really fl dealing with floppy bits when you want to put it together. With that now fitting snug in its little hole, we can move on and start to work on the front section. Doing the exact same method as we have done before, just taking it down with the sandpaper, really careful, really slowly. And that's starting to fit good. We do now need to start bringing down a bit of plastic at the front, so that's too small to get the sandpaper in. So the trusty files that we mentioned earlier, it's time to bring those out. And there we are, fits in beautifully. It's not going anywhere. And with that one done, we can now start to move on to the other side. It's the exact same process as we've done before. Carefully taking down the plastic, filing it in, and seeing how it fits. Snugly. It's the moment of truth. Time to start dry fitting this together just to see how it all goes. And there we are, that's starting to come together. Next up, we need to make these, I'm not quite sure what they are really, but these little side generator -y engine bits that uh, go onto the side of the waste, we need to make those fit. So that was just a matter of removing some material on both where they fit in on the side of the torso and on the actual sides of them themselves, until they just slotted in. Did that on both. And there we are fitting well. Moving around to the back of the torso now, we've got this sort of rear entrance. Now this doesn't slot in anywhere like the sides does, so it makes it a little bit more awkward to try and figure out how it all fits in in relation to the other parts. So we need to dry fit everything a little bit more. Thankfully with the tight tolerances of the side pieces it helps hold this in place. And with that pushed in, it's really starting to look like a Warlord Titan now. So this lets me know that there's just a little bit of plastic we need to be removing on either side. Back to the trusty sandpaper, this isn't going to require much work at all. And with another little dry fit, look at that, snug as a bug. With the rear now fitting well, it's onto the front piece. The holes in the front are so that I can run the wiring in that's going to have the LEDs as well as the holes inside, that's just me forward thinking in terms of potential cable management. So holding it up here we can see that I just need to take a little bit of plastic off either side, it doesn't require that much work. With all four pieces of the torso now done we can dry fit and see how it looks and at this point the size and scale of this thing is really starting to hit me. Just to see this in my hands, knowing that this is probably 25% of the overall size of the model, it is ridiculously big. Which leads us on to the reactors. These are the two pieces that go either side, and they are easily the biggest bits on the model once together, I think second only to the weapons at this point. They have printed pretty well. There are still some bits that we're gonna have to clean up on all the models themselves. As you can see on the reactor here, this has taken quite a bit of a beating from some supports that have stuck onto the side. Other than that, there's a little bit of marks on the top as well, but we'll get rid of those. And we've also got to attack this little bit here and get that flush. Those bits have come up well. And with that done now, it's time to move on to the top of these little vents. As well as attacking any other little bits that we can see around the model. 
That one is now complete, so we can take a look at the other one. And this one actually printed pretty perfectly. I don't think there's anything I need to really do on this one. So that's going to save me some time. Next is the centre sections, and these again are printed pretty well, so there's not too much that I need to do on these. Obviously the uh, support marks we need to get down, so we're just going to sand those. We've also got an edge here for another support that we'll just quickly take down with the rotary. And that's all we need to do now on this side. And finally we've got the rear of the reactor. This has got a couple of supports that we need to remove on it. As well as that, we've also got some support marks at the top that need to be sanded down. It was at this point that I noticed some weird strange printing lines. I don't know why that's happened, but I don't think they'll show up once painted. Time to repeat the process now, this time on the other side, starting with the front of the reactor. We've got the same marks on the top of the vent hoods, as well as the top of the model, as well as that we've also got some support lines that we need to remove as well. Nice and quick. Next is back to the centre. This has got some more support lines that have been stuck on. Uh, you can see these three here. They're the main big offenders here that we need to get rid of. Everything else is looking pretty good. Again, we also need to sand down the front of this. That was nice and simple to do. And with a quick little cleanup, we can now check just to see how flush it is with all the rest. And that's looking pretty good. Another monstrous piece on this beast. This is the carapace centre of the torso bit. This is the bit that sort of hides all the centre and everything connects to from the shoulders and the reactors and all of that. So we've got a couple of little support marks at the top. This was really easily sanded off. And with that, that bit was done. Next is onto the shoulders. This is the part where the shoulder plates connect onto as well as the shoulder mounted guns. These are the worst offenders in terms of supports sticking to the prints. These are on both sides, top and bottom. So we're gonna to need to get these off. Although they're gonna be hidden, um, it's just for my sanity as well. I've also gone in and marked left and right on both of them just by making little holes in the slicer. It's just gonna make my life easier when coming back to it. So I came in with the snips and despite the mistake that I made earlier where I made a hole, I didn't really care on these pieces, they're going to be hidden away, um, making sure to cover them as I was snipping them off because these bits flew everywhere and I didn't want a little bit in my eye. This has made kind of an ugly looking surface, so next we're going to come in with the rotary tool and just sand all that down. As I say, this isn't going to be seen once it's all put together, so it doesn't need to be too neat. Uh, but these parts are going to be going into the body itself, so they do need to be flushed down. And onto the other side, it's pretty much the same process now, going through, making sure not to take an eye out with all these plastic pieces flying everywhere. Not really worrying if I make a mess. And then coming back in with a rotary tool as well. That ended up quite well. There's obviously pitting from where all the snips have taken chunks of plastic out, but that's okay. Next is getting it to fit, and it's the reactor it fits into, not the body that I said earlier. This is going to be a similar process to working on the sides of the torso, where we're just going to remove some material from either side of the shoulder points, just to make it fit in. We've also got an awkward little bit, you can see there in the centre, like we had on the tip of the sides of the torso, where we're going to have to get a file in uh, to try and make that fit. So we're just going to remove the material from here first. This took quite a while to go back and forth with the rotary sander, it was just a lot of trial and error you only get one chance really to make this fit once. It's better to go slow as opposed to blowing away loads of plastic and then as I said you've got floppy loose parts, you're trying to fit everything together and it just becomes a nightmare when gluing. That was feeling a lot better now. What was holding it back is that top bit in the centre where we're now going to have to come back in and remove some plastic in there. For this I went back to the rotary tool and just started to remove bits as smoothly and controlled as I could. Making sure to go all the way around it.
and after coming back to it a few times, fitted perfectly. I've jumped ahead now and done the same on the opposite side. That one's also fitting in really well. So after dry fitting them together, this is how they've turned out and this is really started to come together. Moving on to where the guns mount to. These have also got the same flat print issue from where the support's connected onto. As well as that, I also need to get the supports out of the holes that I've made for LED wiring to run through. While breaking all of this out, I made the mistake of pushing the file right through the piece as you can see here. Thankfully this is going to be hidden so it's not too much of an issue. This is uh, one of the trade-offs of printing hollow. I gave the top a light sanding down because this piece isn't going to really be seen once it's all built. I wasn't too concerned to get it perfectly flat just so that the paint would adhere to it better. These now are the arm pins. This is what goes through that shoulder joint and that's what the top of the arm then connects onto. These only needed a quick bit of sanding with a rotary and they were done. Finally, it is onto the arms. I went in and cut the STL file at the weapon connector. This is so that I can put a magnet washer on here and hot swap the weapons out. I'm also gonna run two little wire connectors through here so that I can have LEDs in the weapons and they can be interchangeable and light up no matter what configuration I have. These only required a light bit of sanding. And finally, with a little test fit and getting all of the supports out of the rivets, it was done. That is now all of the chassis cleaned up. In the next episode, we're gonna be moving on to actually starting to build it. Uh, we're starting off obviously with the base and the feet, getting all the electronics worked out in that. Uh, the battery pack's gonna be in the base, gonna be running wires all the way up through the body, into the head, into the arms. Um, come along for this process, it's gonna be fun. It's going to be a learning curve for everyone. So thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe, and I will see you soon.